Hello. Yes, 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 oh, and oh, hopefully this is good. Super teacher here. Thank you, Katie, for the super teacher. Hold on, just let me hold up the walls of the uh, camera. <coughs> oh. Today we are doing rounding decimals, okay? Pretty straightforward, not super hard, but you have to understand a little bit about place value when we do it, okay? Just like the camera rounding at the beginning, although maybe it didn't seem like it was, the decimals we're gonna do are rounding. So if you remember back to place value, right? We do something like this. 143 decimal, 678. Remember, we have names for these things, right? When we think place value, what house is this? Or what place is this? We call it the ones, right? We've got the tens, and we've got the hundreds. hundreds. Good. Now, the thing that's different about decimals is we don't have a once place. Because these are just parts of a whole, right? The 143 is the whole number, 143. Decimal 678 is a part of another whole. Right? It's not a full whole. So we've got a, if we were going to say like example of like money, we've got $143 and six seven eighths of another dollar or a part of another dollar. If we wanted to talk about bananas, we've got 143 bananas and 0.678 of another banana. There is no ones. When we go into this column, it goes straight to the what we call tenths. Tenths. What comes after the tenths? Yeah, we then have the hundreds. Right? And up here, we've got thousands. Anyone know what comes after thousands? Ten thousands. Then hundred thousands. Millions. Ten millions. Hundred millions. Right? So it's important that we know these names when we're rounding decimals. Okay? Just like when we round whole numbers, rounding decimals is very similar. Okay? You'll get language that will ask you questions like round to the nearest tenth. Okay? So if you heard, let's put up a number here uh, 386 decimal. Seven, five, one. If we said round to the nearest tenth, you have to go to the tenth, and then we put a little line under it. Okay, so we're rounding this number. Anytime we're rounding the number, we have to look at the number that's past it or beside it. So we're going to look at the number beside it. Our rounding rules. Okay, our rounding rules. Zero to four stays the same. Oftentimes, people say it's also called rounding down. And we're going to talk about that in a second, okay? Five to nine, right? The number goes up. So, when we look at something like this, 386 decimal 751, Round to the nearest tenth. We say, okay, the tenth is the seven, so that's the number we're rounding. Are we going to keep it at seven and make everything else zero? Right? That's what rounding down means. If we were to round it down, we go from 751 to 700. So we're rounding it down to 700 as opposed to 751. That's rounding down. But are we going to round it down? No, because the number beside it is a... Five. So if we're rounding to the nearest tenth, what does 386 decimal 751 become? Three, eight, six, decimal eight. Okay? Or you could say 800 if you wanted to, right? But if we're rounding to the nearest, in this case, tenth, 
You then look at the number beside it, which is five. Five means I have to take that tenth up to the next number, right? What if I'm rounding to the nearest hundred? Hundred. What does this number become if I'm rounding to the nearest hundred? Cruz? Um, 387. Eight, eight? Um, no. So if we're rounding to the nearest hundred, we're looking at this and beside it. Oh, 750. So it becomes 386 decimal. 75 or 750, right? Because it's a 1, so my 5 is going to stay the same. 51 gets rounded down to 50. Does that make sense for everyone? Rounding is something we've been doing for a while, okay? But the terminology is what sometimes throws students off. Round to the nearest tenth. Round to the nearest hundredth. Okay? It's telling you which number you're going to round, so you've got to then go to the one beside it, or one past it, okay? Sometimes math will throw you a weird, a weird way of looking at stuff. Here we said round to the nearest what? When we were looking at the five, what were we rounding to? The nearest hundred, right? Sometimes in your math textbooks, or sometimes you'll see things that will say, round to the second decimal place. If it says round to the second decimal place, it just means from the decimal, go over two. That's the one you're going to round. So you've got to look at the one beside it. Round to the nearest decimal, just one decimal, right? In the work that we're going to look at today, they've got both languages. Some questions will say round to the nearest tenth. Some will say round to the nearest hundredth. Some will say round to the nearest thousandth. And some will say round to two decimal places. Round to two decimal places. So round to two decimal places means two places past the decimal. If they said round to three decimal places, round the number that's three past the decimal. You circle that one and you look at the number beside it. In this case, the number beside it would be zero, right? Because we know that zeros can continue to go forever. They're always just holding the place of a number. Does anyone have any questions around rounding? Remember, wherever it's asking you to round, you have to, you can circle that number. If it says the nearest tenth, circle the tenth and look at the number beside it. Yep? Um, what if, how would you do it if, if you had to round the whole number, like you had to use decimal? Great question. So what if we had to round a whole number? So let's say this. Let's say we have 361, and it says round to the nearest tenth. Okay? 361, round to the nearest tenth. What is the nearest tenth right now? What's the number in the tenth spot? It's just a zero. Right? And we've got zero, zero. If they said round to the nearest tenth, what would the number become? Minus. What? Huh? Um, uh, minus. Why minus? Because um, it can't, um, it, when it goes down more, it turns into. Um, can we round it down more than that right now? No. So it's actually just going to stay the same. If you said round to the nearest tenth and it was a whole number, it's already rounded to the nearest tenth because it's already at zero. We won't be able to round it down more than that right now. Now, if it was this, and they said round to the nearest tenth, here's the tenth, that's the number beside it, it would become 361.1, right? 
because a 6 beside it would round that 0 up to 1. Does that make sense to everyone? You've got your 0 rounding to the nearest tenth. Right now, it's nothing. So you can either keep it at 0, or you can round it up. So it's the only thing you can ever do, right? Keep it at the number it is, or round it up. Those are the two rules. If the number beside it is 0 to 4, you keep it there. If this was 2, right, then the number would become 3, 6, 1, point, 0. But because the number beside it was, I think it was 6, right, we know that if it's 5 to 9, it's got to go up. If it's 0 to 4, it stays the same. So, this one has to go up. From 0, it goes up to 1, right? It goes up to 1. 361.1. All right? We're going to go through, we're going to do some practice questions. Um, they're not super hard. Remember, you'll get like five questions right off the bat that will say round to the nearest tenth. Circle the tenth on your sheet. Okay? Look at the number beside it. Does it stay the same or does it go up? We're going to write them in our notebooks. Okay? All right. Enjoy, have fun. Don't forget to subscribe, like, ring the bell, thumbs up, uh, do a dance. Ah!